I believe in Bitcoin. I absolutely love Bitcoin. And I'm very proud that my father stood on stage in Nashville and he came out and said that he's going to be the Bitcoin president. He's going to be the crypto president. He's going to make America the crypto capital of the world. He's going to put in smart regulation. He's going to do all the right things. I really believe that this is the future of finance. And I can say with great pride that now that he's won, you're going to have the most pro-crypto president in the history of America. When I called my father last week at 6 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, does anybody know what happened that day? We hit 100,000. We hit 100,000. And a bunch of the people in this room were blowing me up. They were sending me tweets. And then I called my father up and I go, Pops, we just reached the moment that everybody was waiting for. Bitcoin hit 100,000. In true Trump fashion, about 15 seconds later, a tweet popped up. It was, Bitcoiners, congratulations, 100,000. You're welcome. Together, we are going to make America great again. Think about a president who isn't going to allow Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to be overregulated and stifled by high taxes. Uh, somebody who will fight like hell against those institutions who have waged war on cryptocurrency. A person who pledged to add crypto to the United States Treasury. A person who pledged to make crypto tax-free. I mean, think about all these incredible things. A person who's pledged to, to fire Gary Gensler. Does anybody like Gary Gensler in here? Gary Gensler waged war against an industry that we all love, and, and everybody knows it. And instead, appoint Paul Atkins, who is an unbelievable ally to this incredible industry. I truly believe that this is the beginning of a financial revolution, not just in America, but truly around the world. As a guy who runs a big real estate company, I think about how I want to safeguard treasury in our company, how I want to invest, how I want to hedge risk. Uh, how I want to transfer funds, how I want to pay vendors, right? How I want to collect funds for tenants and people who pay rent and the people who stay at our hotels. It's a shift in how companies like ours receive money. I can tell you, a lot of eyes were opened when Bitcoin hit 100,000. And I can tell you a hell of a lot more eyes are going to be opened when Bitcoin hits 1 million. And, and I'm confident it's going to hit 1 million. I have a close friend. He's smart as hell. In fact, there's a friend backstage who's doing very well. And six months ago, he was coming up to me, Bitcoin is funny money. Crypto is funny money. And I would invest in treasuries. I would invest in ETFs. No, that's how I would invest. And I laughed at him. And every chance I have a chance to remind him, I go, how's your, uh, how's your portfolio doing right now? I mean, how's that one working out for you? What? Coincidentally, the bank that he works for is one of the big five banks in the world. They just created a crypto desk. And they're putting hundreds of billions of dollars into cryptos. They're inventing ETFs every single day. Guys, people are, are slow to adapt to new technologies. And so I know all of you are thinking, you know, Eric, you're from a real estate family. You spent your entire life in real estate, concrete, drywall. You know, why? You love hard assets. Your family's built monumental wealth, you know, through real estate. You've developed the tallest buildings, you know, in the world. I mean, our concrete buildings, I, I built Trump Chicago. It was the second tallest building in the world when I built it. Our concrete pumps went from Trump Chicago to the Burj Khalifa and that built that building. I mean, we built the biggest buildings anywhere on earth. We run the best hotels, we run the best golf courses, right? From everywhere from Fifth Avenue to South America, the Middle East, Scotland, Ireland. You know, for our family, real, est you know, real estate's always been the bedrock of wealth creation. You know, it's tangible, it's physical, we love it. You can see it, you can feel it, it has energy. But really, here's the thing, guys. For the first time, there's another asset that has energy. There's another new digital asset that's revolutionary, right? I mean, one that consumes energy, one has life, and one that really has potentially more powerful, you know, potential to be more powerful than anything that we've ever seen before. Guys, I've seen people get canceled for their political beliefs. I've seen people get canceled for their religion. I've seen people get canceled for their culture. I've seen the institutions once trusted around the world, the JP Morgan Chases, the Bank of Americas, the TDs, the biggest banks in the world. And this just isn't in America, this is around the world. I've seen them become total you know, tools of political power and influence. 
I've seen government regulators walk into banks and say, you know what, I see that you're banking that person and just understand that we might need to take a little closer look at you if you continue to have them in your portfolio. So why don't you just uh, scoot them out of the way? Guys, I've seen this game. So many people in this room have seen this game. And I think what's more, I've also come to learn and see how antiquated the traditional finance system is around the world. Guys, it's slow as hell. It's inefficient, it's expensive. And generally speaking, it doesn't serve the needs of hundreds of millions of people around the world. You know, people that don't have our balance sheet, people who don't have the Trump last name, people who don't have our assets, people who don't have the advantages that we have as a family, they have no competitive advantage, they have no capital. Individuals around the world have been left behind by the millions. The traditional sales banking system is rigid, it's vulnerable to manipulation. It's failed the modern world, it's failed to adapt, it's failed to keep up with the modern world, it's failed the needs of the modern world. And guys, really, that's where crypto emerges. You know, I ask this question every single time somebody asks about crypto, but I say, does it make any sense that, you know, a beautiful young couple, they want to go out, they want to get financing for a home. It takes them 90 days, it takes them 120 days to get financing. Does that make any sense whatsoever? By the time they get financing, that home that they wanted to buy, it's gone, it's sold, their dreams are, are destroyed. How in the world does that make sense? I mean, I can go on my phone right now, I can trade Bitcoin at midnight on a Saturday night while having dinner with my wife. How the hell does it take 120 days to get a loan in developed nations around the world? It doesn't make any sense. The traditional banking system is antiquated. Why do banks work on a nine to five schedule five days a week? Does anybody in this room work on a nine to five schedule? No. Bitcoin's not just an investment. It's a global asset. It's a store of values, hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against political turmoil, political instability, acts of gods, hurricanes, fires, floods, tornadoes. Guys, that's what makes it so powerful. There's no capex, there's no insurance, there's no mismanagement, there's no corruption. There's no brokers, there's no break rooms, there's no HR, there's no DEI nonsense. There's no need for tens of thousands of bankers and massive skyscrapers all over the world pushing credit applications and antiquated paperwork, you know, charging exorbitant fees. There is nothing. There is nothing that's done in those buildings that can't be done better on blockchain. You know, I've known Michael Saylor for 20 years. I, I mean, and by the way, if you want to talk about a great champion for this industry is Michael Saylor. That guy deserves all the credit in the world. There's very few people who are smarter and there are very few people who are better cheerleaders for an industry that clearly he believes in. He's a, he's a national treasure to the United States and frankly, he's a national treasure to this world. I think I even said to Michael Saylor in the early years, Michael, I don't get this stuff. I mean, I know you love Bitcoin. I, I don't get it. If I can't feel it, if I can't see it, it's really not for me. But now more than ever before, now after everything I witnessed, having maybe the greatest look behind the curtains of anybody on, on earth into what the systems truly are, how the systems are manipulated, Bitcoin is actually proving to be the greatest complement to the hard assets our family loves so much. That scarcity, that hard limit, it makes it incredibly valuable, especially as these assets are being purchased in the billions. That's why you see the, sky, you know, the price skyrocket the way it is. But unlike real estate, Bitcoin's not tied to geography. It's global, it's instantly liquid. You know, try selling this convention center to a read right now. You know, I'll see you in two years. Try going out and selling a big office building. You know, it will take you 18 months to do. At the end of it, you're going to want to shoot yourself in frustration. I truly believe in the coming decades that this is going to become the cornerstone of the modern global financial system. It'll be used to safeguard your wealth. And no, make no mistake about it, guys. We, we are, we as a family and my father in office we're gonna lead the charge doing this. We're gonna lead the charge in, in, in every single way. So my ending message to everybody here is really congratulations 
Bitcoin. Congratulations. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to all the people who have made a fortune off of this technology because you saw it early. Our best days are ahead.